Assalamualaikum and hi, my name is Nur Hidayah and for this grouping assignment, our topic chosen is sustainability of petrochemicals in industry. For my part, I'm going to explain about the petroleum industry. Malaysia's petrochemical industry is thriving, producing chemicals from petroleum and natural gas. Despite challenges like declining supply, rising costs and environmental concerns, the industry continues to grow rapidly due to the country's abundant hydrocarbon feedstock resources. Malaysia's government investment has made it the leading exporter of petrochemical products in Asia. The industry has evolved through divestitures, joint ventures and partnerships with Malaysia posing significant crude oil and natural gas reserve, ranking 24th and 14 in the world respectively. The largest liquefied natural gas production facility is located in Malaysia. Major players in the industry include Petronas and international companies like Shell, ExxonMobil and ConocoPhillips. The industry's growth is attributed to factors like oil and gas resources, well-developed infrastructure, competitive costs and its strategic location within Asia and the Far East. Malaysia uses both conventional and non-conventional energy sources, with petroleum being the largest non-renewable resource. Malaysia's GDP per capita has grown consistently in the past eight years, aligning with Vision 2020 Industrial Program 7.5% annual growth rate. Natural gas reserves attract foreign investment, with petroleum products and petrochemical sector experiencing steady growth. The demand for petrochemicals is closely linked to customer demand and economic growth, particularly in Asia. China and India are expected to increase their refining capacity, focusing on plastics production by 2025. This increase in refining capacity will increase the supply of feedstocks and basic petrochemicals in the region, creating opportunities for petrochemical projects. The Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership RCEP is expected to boost petrochemical trade and encourage investment in petrochemical projects. Despite China's continued growth in demand, there is still potential for development and investment in petrochemical projects in Asia. As value chains become more regionalized, there is still increasing appeal for investors both within Asia and globally to invest in petrochemical projects in the region. Hi, my name is Siti Mariam, so I'm going to portray with the current development of uh, petrochemical industry in the Malaysia. So, uh, as for the first point, according to IK, Malaysia's economy is the la third largest in Southeast Asia after Indonesia and Thailand and the 35th largest in the world. So, the chemical industry is a significant contributor to the Malaysian economy with petrochemicals and oleochemicals being its key products. The second one, according to chemical and petrochemical market insight, the Malaysian chemical and petrochemical market have a sizable volume of 124 and 116.4 uh, tons as of 2020 and from 2021 to 2025. It is anticipated to develop even more with a compound annual growth rate of 4.2%. So as everyone knows, fuels chemicals, plastic and rubbers and vegetable byproducts that uh, especially palm oil has, uh, has dominated the country's export and imports. It is since 1990s, Malaysian petrochemical sector has grown significantly that are uh, influenced by several factors which is uh, extensive supply of oil and gas as a fixed stock and a re reliable infrastructure also as a, also a, a strong base of auxiliary services. So, uh, several aspects must be considered to ensure the petrochemicals industry in Malaysia has a sustainable future. So, these variables can direct the industry in a direction that is both commercially and environmentally friendly. So, as in Malaysia, Shell can be categorized as a sustained petrochemical company. Uh, there are some key points that keep the company sustained in the petrochemical industry in Malaysia. Firstly, Shell has made a significant investment in oil and gas products in Malaysia. Uh, sorry, oil, in, oil and gas projects in Malaysia, strategically focusing on projects such as the Phase 3 GK project and the Phase 4 of the Sabah Deepwater Oil projects. This investment plays a crucial role in boosting output and sustaining the 
oil and gas sector in Asia, particularly in the face of a tight global supply environment. So this investment demonstrates Shell's commitment to meeting the energy demands of the region and ensuring a sustainable future for the oil and gas industry in Malaysia. Okay, next, uh, Shell Malaysia actively engage in partnership with various organizations to drive sustainable development in Malaysia. So one of the partnership is with Econet, a registered not-for-profit environmental organization. So through this collaboration, Shell Malaysia aims to promote sustainable development across various sectors that leveraging Econet's expertise and initiative sorry, to drive positive environmental and social impacts. Furthermore, uh, Shell has partnered with Pakus Trust to transform the former Pisau Camp into a nature reserve. This partnership focuses on preserving and restoring the area's biodiversity and ecological balance that turning it into a valuable natural asset for the community and future generations. So another significant partnership is with the Malaysian Nature Society as an esteemed organisation that dedicated to protecting Malaysia's rich biological diversity. So through this collaboration, Shell actively contribute to the protection, management and conservation of Malaysia's natural heritage. So by working together, Shell and its partner aim to create a positive impact and contribute to a more sustainable future for Malaysia. So uh, the next factor is uh, another step taken by Shell is Shell Malaysia has committed to achieving a more sustainable future through its retail operations. So with over 200 solar powered retail stations in Malaysia, Shell has implemented various sustainable features to reduce carbon emissions which uh, include food waste composting machines, energy efficient air conditioner and chillers, recycl recycling facilities and smart LED lighting system. So this initiative demonstrates Shell's dedication to sustainable practice and environmental stewardship in its retail operations. So as I mentioned before, uh, Shell is actively collaborate with the few organizations, right? So next I'm going to explain in terms of biodiversity, Shell actively collaborates with conservation organizations to restore and preserve uh, natural habitats and ecosystem near its operations. So the, the company acknowledged the significance of addressing climate change and plays a role in supporting people's well-being and maintaining a high quality of life. So overall, uh, Shell Malaysia exemplifies a steadfast dedication to responsible energy delivery, priorita prioritizing the well-being of people, safety and environmental preservations. So with a deep understanding of the significance of sustainability, Shell has proactively undertaken a range of initiatives and established strategic partnership to drive sustainable development throughout Malaysia. So by embodying uh, these principles, Shell strives to contribute positively to society, to environment and uh, to the long-term well-being of Malaysia. Hello, my name is Muhammad Azim Mam bin Muhammad Azim. So I will continue presenting about Petrochemical in Asia, specifically current development in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia established Saudi Aramco, which fully state-owned by the government, is responsible for 30% of worldwide output and 3% of natural gas production. Saudi Aramco heavily invests in upstream exploration and downstream manufacturing, which draws into Saudi massive oil and gas deposit. Due to this success, Saudi Arabia able to increase its basic petrochemical good export, which mainly in Italy and Poland. Saudi government actively encouraged the development of the downstream petrochemical value chain, which include plastic, value-added specialty chemicals, and engineering thermoplastic. Rather only focus on exporting basic petrochemicals, this group serves to domestic sectors such as automobile, appliance, and consumer items. Based on our research, the similarities between Saudi Aramco and Petronas in petrochemical industry are due to these three factors. First, the domination of both firms in the petrochemical sector is due to their respective nation-rich hydrocarbon deposit, allow them to gain profit substantially. Secondly, the strategy that was done by both companies 
Saudi Aramco and Petronas invest in upstream and downstream. Also, their petrochemical manufacture, which contribute to their optimization in process, which also capture value at numerous stages, and increase efficiency and profitability. Last but not least, both of the firms have their back support by the government, which allowing them to promote a stable business climate to encourage the growth and sustainability of their respective oil firms. Now I will discuss about limitations and challenges in petrochemical industry. Firstly, economic downturn. The revenue of the oil and gas industry in Malaysia has demonstrated in the table. A starting point for exploring oil and gas sector in Malaysia is the revenue trend observed during the period from 1975 to 1980. As the revenue surged due to the geopolitical event of the 1973 Arab-Israel war, which led to significant increase in global oil prices. However, the industry experienced a substantial decline in revenue during the period from 1995 to 1999, particularly in 1997, which coincided the Asian financial crisis. This economic crisis had profound impact on the oil and gas industry in Malaysia, resulting in the lowest recorded revenue levels. It is evident that external factors such as geopolitical events, financial crises, can significantly impact revenue performance and fiscal growth in Malaysia oil and gas sector. Secondly, fluctuation in fixed stock availability. Malaysia hydrocarbon resources are not infinite. The nation oil and gas sector has experienced decline in production capacity over time due to the maturation of large fuel. In 2016, the total fuel production stood at 757k barrel per day but 2020 had decreased to 955k barrel per day in 2016, the country's reserve would be sufficient until 2030. This estimate was supported by the Economic Affairs Ministry in 2019 when they announced in Parliament that local oil and gas fields were projected to be debated by 2029. And lastly, limitation in access to a skilled workforce. Institute for Labor Market Information and Analysis and Talent Corp in 2019-2020 indicate that oil and gas industry in Malaysia grapples with filling occupation. In 2018, study conducted by Petronas on the Malaysia OGSE talent landscape reveals as a significant experience gap in drilling and underwater service between junior and seasoned professional. In conclusion, the sustainable future of petrochemical in Malaysia and Asia relies on combination of factors that encompass industry projects, technological investment, government support, and overcoming challenges. It is important to acknowledge that address the challenges faced by petrochemical industry, economic downturns, fluctuation in fixed stock ability, and geopolitical risks pose significant obstacles to industry stability and growth. To secure sustainable future for the petrochemical industry, collaboration between industry players, government, and other stakeholders is essential. By embracing technological investment, implementing environmentally friendly practice, and overcoming challenges through strategic planning and adaptation, the petrochemical sector in Malaysia and Asia. That's all from us. Thank you.